continue lighting in the master bedroom. We'll start by test rendering to check the environment lighting there. Go to the camera and change the f-stop to 4. Now we can start interior lighting. Go to the top view and light. Select Corona light. Drag and drop a light to the table lamp. And change the intensity to 60. Instance for the other one and do a test render. We need to change the intensity to 150. Looks pretty good now. Then we need to add IE slides for the pot lights and we can do this by copy pasting from living area. Instance for the rest and then do test render. To create more contrast, we'll change the temperature for IES to 5000 and the temperature of the table lamp to 4000. Now we'll add some IES light to the closet area and start lighting the ensuite. First, we'll do a test render for the environment lighting. Then we'll add some IES light and check the brightness. Change the intensity to 100. Looking pretty good. Now we need to add light under the wall panel on top of the toilet, which will be done with a rectangle light. Rotate it 180 degrees and change the temperature to 4000. Check mark visible directly as we want to see in the render. Let's do a test render. It's too bright, so we'll change the intensity to 20 and temperature to 4000. Okay, we are done for this area. Let's move on to the office. As usual, we'll begin by doing a test render. There is no window for this area and the only light that we have is from the corridor. We'll start by adding light under the shelves. Go to the light and add a rectangle light about the same length of the shelf. Move it to the center and rotate it by 180 degrees and instance it for the other ones. Now we'll do a test render before changing anything else. Let's change the intensity to 15 for now. Next up is the table lamp. Add a sphere light and change the intensity and size of the light. For the pot lights, we'll copy paste the same IES light from the corridor and change the IES map to another from IES folder. Change the intensity to 100, temperature to 4500 and size to 2 cm. Let's copy paste the same ideas with the previous map for the both wall lightings. The last one is the chandelier on top of the desk and we'll do that by adding a dislike under the chandelier. Let's change the intensity to 60, temperature to 4000 and set the radius to 18 cm. Let's do a test render. To change the overall temperature, we can tweak the white balance in virtual frame buffer and change it to 5500. After we've added all the lights, we can play with the intensity to attain a good result. For example, we can make pot lights darker and lights for the chandelier brighter to create a focus at the center of the office. The last area that we'll cover is the powder room. Let's do a test render first and then copy paste the IES. We need to change it to a warmer temperature, like 4000 or 4500. It's looking pretty good. Before submitting renders, we'll need to set a background photo. So let's go to the top view and with a cylinder make an area around the suite. Convert it to editable poly and delete the top and bottom polygons and apply a normal map to see the texture inside of the cylinder. For the texture, let's use a Chrono bitmap and select the background texture. Select Chrono color correction and assign the bitmap to this. In the Chrono color correction, we'll change the saturation to negative 0.3 and exposure to negative 0.1. For the tint color, let's select the blue grayish color and then assign it to the Chrono light material and change the intensity to 50. Uncheck visible in reflection because we don't want this cylinder affect on the reflection and close the material editor. Now we'll right click on cylinder, object properties and uncheck receive shadow and cast shadows. 
because we don't want this cylinder to receive or cast any shadows. Hit OK and apply this texture to the cylinder. And go to the living room camera and do a test render. In terms of color and lighting, it matches with the interior light. Now we may want to do a test to make sure the position matches with the camera's horizon line. To do that, we'll also select the background, select camera, and check my horizon line. Move down the cylinder to match the horizon line of the background with camera. We are done with this part now. Let's go back to the powder room and start doing final renders. To submit each render, we may need to change the aspect ratio. For example, the powder room is good to have a more square render. Let's change the image aspect to 1.4 and like it. Change the width to 5000 and hit enter. The height will be set automatically by the image aspect. Scroll down and in the render output, files, select, insert the folder where we want to save the render and hit enter. We'll do this for each area separately. After we're done with renders, we'll do some post-production in Adobe Photoshop. Open Photoshop and go to the file, open, on your computer, go to the folder where you save the render and past renders, and open it. We'll have to copy-paste all the past renders to the main render one. After that, we can close them and we'll have one file with all of them together. Now we'll want to start to organize them. Create a group with reflection, refraction, bloom glare, and CTEX map and call it adjustment and another group for wire color and call it selection. Start with CTEX map and turn off the other ones. For CTEX map, go to the drop down menu and select multiply. This is pretty intense, so with opacity, let's lessen it to about 21%. The next one is reflection pass and we'll change it to screen mode. With the eye icon, we can turn it on and off to see the past render result on the render. Let's change the opacity to 33%. For the refraction pass, let's do a screen mode with an opacity of 18%. The last one is bloom clear, and this one should be a screen mode again with the opacity of 70%. As you can see, it's impacting the lights. Now it's time to combine all these adjustments and make one layer while keeping all these render passes separate. Select the main render and adjustment layers, right click and duplicate the layer and merge. Create a group for that and rename it to Post Pro. We'll change this layer to Smart Object and the reason for that is to preserve an image source content with all of its original characteristics which enable us to perform non-destructive editing to the layer. Right click on the layer and select convert to smart object. By hitting ctrl plus we can zoom in, then go to the filter, camera raw filter and select it. In this window we can do a lot of editing like enhancing saturation, contrast, clarity and many other options. Let's start with temperature and move the temperature slider to the left and right. Two looks good here. Set the exposure to 0.15, contrast to 14, highlight 27, shadow 13, and blacks to 7. To have more details in the texture, we can change texture to 12, clarity 13, and vibrance to 5. The next tab is detail, and is for sharpening. We'll change the amount to 26. In HSL adjustment, we can emphasize and saturate colors separately. For instance, if we want to have more saturated blue environment light, we move the slider for blue to the right. Or for the green color in the scene, we can do the same. Last adjustment is effect. We can do vignetting here by changing the amount to negative 43 and midpoint to 61. After doing that, we'll go back to the exposure and change the amount to 0.65 and hit OK. We may want to create more contrast with the blue environment color and warm color inside. To do that, we'll open the camera raw filter again and with brush, select left side close to the window 
and change the temperature to negative 29. We are now done with post-production, so we'll need to save it. Go to the file, save as, save it in your desired folder as a PSD file, and then a JPEG. Next up, animation. 